On September 15th, 2007, I was there. The amount of college football games I've been to, I could count on two hands. Two East-West Shriners games in 1991 and 1992. Two San Jose State games in 1993 and 2005. Four December Bowl games in the 2000s. Three Silicon Valley football classics in 2001, 2003, and 2004. One Emerald Bowl in 2005. A milestone of a birthday was on the horizon after my days as a bachelor ended on August 18th. When I got back from my honeymoon, I logged on a new site I discovered a year earlier called StubHub to find tickets to some kind of sporting event in the Bay Area. I wanted to spend my 30th birthday at a stadium. Stanford was hosting San Jose State and would be dubbed the newly named Bill Walsh Classic after the legendary coach passed away that summer. But that's usually a wind padding game for the Cardinal. The Giants would be in San Diego on that day. The A's would be at home against the Texas Rangers, but an A's game with me was like, been there, done that, in two different ways. I was at the Coliseum a month earlier to watch the A's beat the White Sox in extra innings two days before I got married. I also had not been all that lucky going to A's games on my birthday. On Silver Sunday, my 25th in 2002, the A's lost to the Mariners. In 2004, the A's got blasted by the Rangers two days after Ranger pitcher Frank Francisco threw a chair into the stands and it hit a fan. Then I found something for a reasonable price on StubHub. A front row end zone ticket to Memorial Stadium in Berkeley. Memorial Stadium. A place where in 1982, a chaotic moment happened against Stanford, which would simply be known as the play. A place where an alumnus of that university in the 1990s would rile up the crowd by doing the truffle shuffle. Like Stanford on that day, the Golden Bears would be hosting a Western Athletic Conference opponent, the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. A quick rundown of famous Louisiana Tech alumni, 1990s Pro Bowl lineman Willie Rofe, five-time Major League All-Star pitcher and Tawny Katane's punching bag Chuck Finley, four-time Super Bowl champion and two-time Super Bowl MVP of the 1970s, Terry Bradshaw, Olympic double gold medalist in basketball, the mailman, Carl Malone, turn of the millennium country music legend, Trace Adkins, Duck Commander founder, Phil Robertson, Kix Brooks, one half of the country music duo, Brooks and Dunn, and Mark Swayze, creator of the comic book character, Captain Marvel, who was better known as Shazam. The Cal Bears were going into the 2007 season with high hopes after a very good 2006 season, the six under head coach Jeff Tedford. The Bears went 10-3 in 2006, being co-champions of the Pacific 10 Conference alongside USC and won the Holiday Bowl against Texas A&M. In the first two games of the 2007 season, the Bears beat a ranked Southeastern Conference opponent in Tennessee and beat Colorado State on the road to be ranked 8th in the nation going into this game. The actual trip to this game was a journey in and of itself. I took the BART from Fremont to Berkeley while playing NCAA Football 2007 on my PSP. When I got off the train, I was a stranger in a new land. I had never been to the city of Berkeley until that day. It would be a long walk to Memorial Stadium and I had a hard time trying to find it. I walked through the campus that held the historical free speech movement in the 1960s. To me, it really felt like walking on sacred ground. Eventually, I followed the crowd in my walk to the stadium. It wasn't a walk. It was more like a hike going uphill to Memorial Stadium. When I arrived at the stadium and walked in through the gate, I would find myself in the middle of a football wonderland. People were trying to catch long passes on a makeshift field from people who thought they were Aaron Rodgers. Even I got in on all of the action. After the pregame fun, I walked in the old stadium. One lesson I didn't learn from the 2003 Silicon Valley Football Classic as I took my seat in the front row of the Blue Zone. Never get front row seats in the end zone unless where you're sitting has a video screen to look at because I could never tell whether the player is coming or going. At least the Silicon Valley game had a screen for me to watch the action and I was in the southern end zone where it was a little more elevated. Where I was sitting for the Cal game, the screen was behind me, the first row was at field level, so this was going to be a visual nightmare. On top of that, my front row seat was where everybody was walking through. This minor inconvenience wouldn't mar the day too much. A few players on the Cal Bears that year would go on to the NFL after the 2007 season. Wide receiver Lavelle Hawkins and tight end Craig Stevens would both be drafted by the Tennessee Titans in the 2008 NFL Draft. Running back Justin Forsett would be drafted by the Seattle Seahawks. Receiver Deshaun Jackson would be drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. One more bear would join the NFL, but not until 2010 when the Detroit Lions drafted running back Javid Best in the first round. 
The quarterbacks starting this game were two players who played college ball, but not much else. Starting quarterback for Louisiana Tech was Zach Champion. In his senior season of 2007, Champion threw for over 2,200 yards with 13 touchdowns. Champion went on to have a brief career in the Canadian Football League with the BC Lions, Calgary Stampeders, and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Nate Longshore, the starting quarterback for Cal, was in his junior season in 2007. His college career would dramatically be altered by a sprained ankle that resulted in a bone spur. Upon his return later in the season, he wasn't the same. In 2008, Longshore would be backing up Kevin Riley after Longshore struggled in the opening game of that season. After his days at Cal were over, he went undrafted in the 2009 NFL Draft. He tried out for a couple of teams, but was never offered a contract. He made the practice squad of the San Jose Sabercats when the team returned to the Arena Football League in 2011, but he never made the team. His final college game did end on a positive note where he defeated the Miami Hurricanes in the 2008 Emerald Bowl, which was still being played across the bay in San Francisco. In the first play in the first quarter, just 13 seconds in, Cal's Lavelle Hawkins took the opening kickoff all the way for 90 yards. Just like that, Cal had a 7-0 lead. This was all the excitement we got in the first quarter. In the second quarter, with almost 8 minutes left, I got a close-up view of Justin Forsett pounding the ball in the end zone for a 2-yard run. A few minutes later, Tech was finally on the board when freshman Joe Anderson caught a short 2-yard pass from Champion. The PAT missed. Cal would answer back less than a minute later when Forsett came my way again with a 39-yard run to the end zone. Two minutes later, likely after Champion would throw one of his two interceptions of the game, Craig Stevens caught a 17-yard pass from Longshore in the end zone. At the half, Cal was doing what a top 25 team would do against a non-BCS conference school. Nearly five minutes into the second half, Louisiana Tech would find the end zone for the last time that day as Champion threw a short five-yard pass to Patrick Johnson in the end zone. The Bulldogs tried for two on a run, but came up short. Two minutes and change later, Javid Best added to Cal's lead when he caught a 16-yard pass from Longshore. Less than 10 minutes left in the game, Cal put the game on ice as Forsett found the end zone one more time with the goal line run. That's pretty much all that's left to see. Cal took care of business obliterating this whack opponent. I had quite the adventure getting back home, well at least walking back to the BART station in downtown Berkeley. I crossed through the campus and then I got lost. I spent the next 20 minutes trying to find anything that I remembered seeing when I got off the train earlier in the afternoon. I would eventually find a few things that were familiar and I made it back home in one piece. The Cal Bears strung together a five game winning streak to begin the 2007 season. Longshore would be injured in their win against Oregon, which would land Cal as the number two ranked team in college football. On October 13th, the Whales completely came off. Starting on that day, Cal would go on to lose six of the last seven games of the season, including a loss to their bitter rivals, Stanford. The Bears would salvage their season with the win against Air Force at the Armed Forces Bowl. Before the season fell apart, it was great to see Cal Bears football near the top of the polls. I was glad to be there during that impressive run to number two. I was glad to celebrate a milestone at that historic stadium when I was there on my 30th birthday, September 15th, 2007.